All right, I hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm next, and we'll be going over more of a fun build that I like to call the Bonk Blade. Basically, we will recharge up a Disney Swing and follow up with a Bonk into Oblivion with our Onslaught. As always, I'll have timestamps on screen down below if you're looking for anything specific. But without further ado, let's bonk our way into the build. All right, so the first step we run is Sword Singer. Two piece adds max damage, three piece adds weapon and spell damage, four piece adds crit, five piece adds up to 600 weapon and spell damage to your two handed abilities. So this set will make us hit really, really hard with a Dizzy and Swing and into our Onslaught. So very, very good, very solid. Next we do run Valor. One piece adds 129 weapon and spell damage, two piece. So for every ultimate we spend, we get weapon and spell damage equal to the amount spent. So if we have 200 ulti and we cast a Onslaught, we get 200 weapon and spell damage. Same thing if we have full 500 ultimate, we get an extra 500 weapon spell damage to our onslaught. So very good, very powerful. Next that we do run is Rallying Cry. Adds crit, max mag, crit, five piece. When Battle Spirit is active, critically healing yourself or an ally. Grants you and up to 11 other group members, up to 300 weapon spell damage. And I believe with like 1630 crit resist at, at gold quality for 20 seconds. Each group member effect reduces this weapon spell damage by 15 and crit resist by 81. Still a good set. Even if you're with a buddy or two, it'll still be really good. You know, benefit to everybody. All right, so for the next set we do run is market. Basically gain 100 weapon spell damage for every that you are wearing at least three pieces of so right now we are wearing two three pieces so we get 200 weapon spell damage and we also get 23 14 armor which is very good honestly with marking and and rallying cry we are very tanky for a gank build honestly kind of dumb to think about so for the front bar we do run a sourcing with battle axe precise i feel like this is the best way the reason the way we run battle axe because we do benefit from the passive from the heavy weapons from the 2h axe increases your critical damage by 12 percent that is so powerful so good way better than 284 weapon spell damage in my honest opinion so we do run precise on this with the shock enchant i feel like the reason that we run precise is because the problem with the gank build is you're guaranteed to crit your dizzy and swing your only problem is you're not guaranteed to crit your onslaught right after that so being able to bump up the crit even more means that we're going to be able to crit more off with our gank and that's what i like about builds i like having more consistent builds i don't like builds that like Okay, you can do a, like a lot, a lot of damage, but the only problem is you have like a 10% chance of it actually working. Now, I like my build to have like a really, really high chance of it working because I like consistency over high numbers. I do go shock, just give us a little bit of extra burst and also can prop minor vulnerability. You could go um, berserker enchant, increase your weapon and spell damage by 348. Either one's fine. Next, we do run a rallying cry rest on the back bar. We do run decisive. Being able to increase our ulti gen obviously means we can get our ulties faster, so we can do onslaughts even faster. And obviously, getting more ulti with Balorgs means we can actually get more weapon spell damage from Balorgs. You could go power this patch because of the nerf to radiant regen because we do use a skill called Royal Alert Bam Tog on this. So honestly, either one's fine. But decisive, I think it was probably the best way to go because, you know, being able to get faster ulties, always really nice to have. We do run an absorb magic enchant on there. Pretty much just left it there doesn't really matter so when we do try to build ulti or we're just trying to do heavy attack for resources we get a little bit more extra resources always really nice to have all right so for the body i do go five medium two light so for my medium i do have a medium balor's head and shoulders and for my sword singer obviously because sword singer only comes in medium we have a sword singer chest legs and feet and for my light i do run a rallying cry gloves and sash all divines, all with max mag. The reason we do full max mag on this is because Nightblades do have a little passive a siphoning called Magical Flood. Increases your max mag by up to 8% while siphoning ability is slotted. Very good. This is the reason why we want to bump up our magic. It's because we can get benefit from this passive. So obviously we do have full max mag. All divines. Divines obviously is the best trait for any ganker. Just being able to pump out the most damage. So for our jewelry, we do have all infused spell damage. So the way we run it is we do have a rallying cry neck and a rallying cry ring. And obviously we do have a mark and ring, like I said earlier. Alright, now let's go over the pots. So for the pots, we do run spell pots. The Main reason we run this in grants major sorcery increasing your spell damage by 20 percent because there is no other way in our kit to be able to get major sorcery so for the food we do run ghastly eyeball or ice cream whatever you want to call it increases max mag by almost 4600 and mag recub by just shy of 460 mag recub so this is really good you know gives us a lot of max mag and a lot of mag recub really good all right but enough of that let's go over the skills now All right, so for the first skill we run is Healthy Offering. Basically a nice burst skill, but the main reason we run it is because like we said before, we benefit from the Magic of Flood, from the Siphoning, increases your max mag by 8%. So it's really good. Gives us 8% more max mag, and obviously it's a very, very strong heal. Next, we do have Camo Hunter. Honestly, every build these days runs Camo Hunter. The main reason we run it has, you know, reveal targets, crit doesn't really care about that but what we do care you get minor berserk for five seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank so juicy being able to increase our damage always really nice next we do run killer's blade basically an execute just in case our dizzy swing onslaught combo wasn't enough we could just follow up with this and guaranteed if they're below that threshold you're more than likely gonna hit them for like a 20k plus killer's blade execute crit but the main reason we do run this is because we do benefit from it from the hammer passive with an assassination ability solid it increases your critical damage by 10 percent and also Dealing critical damage grants you and your group minor savagery, increasing your weapon crit by 6%. That is so juicy. 
This pushes it up to 49.3% crit chance. We're almost a 50-50 shot of our onslaught critting, which is very, very good because most builds only run around like 30% crit. Very good. Next, we do run Concealed Weapon, mostly just used for the simple passive. When you leave Sneak Invisibility or Major Expedition end, while in combat, your damage done is increased by 10%. So after we finish our Disney Swing, we leave Stealth or Invisibility. So very good. So our next skill we do run is Disney Swing. This is the start of our combo. Slam an enemy with an upward swing, dealing X amount of physical damage and sending him off balance for 7 seconds. This is basically the start of our combo that we follow up with our Bonk Berserker Rage. Before you guys say anything, relax, wait a second, let me finish. You said this is an onslaught build, why are you running Berserker's Rage? That's just, who calls it Berserker's Rage? Who, who really goes around saying, oh it's a Berserker Rage build? No, everybody just calls it onslaught, that's just what it's called, I just... Whatever calls it, I just run the other morph. So what all morphs do, strike an enemy with a vicious blow dealing X amount of physical damage to them and all nearby enemies. This attack ignores target resistances. So all morphs do that. What this morph does, grants you physical and spell resist equal to the amount ignored from the initial for 8 seconds. That is very good and we're going to get even more tankier after we use this. But the main reason we run it, you are immune to disabling snare and mobilization effects for the duration. You get 8 seconds of snare root and cc immunity that is so powerful honestly you are this makes you being able to do just do the craziest riskiest plays you could ever do you can honestly just do even riskier plays get into even fatter groups and they can't do anything about it because you can't get stunned you're so tanky you have all these tanks that's like it's just crazy what you could do with this i just love this one like I, this is honestly the best morph you can run for the game build <laughs> but enough of that. let's go for the back bar now so for the back bar we do have phantasmal escape mostly just there for the snare immunity and obviously we do get major evasion giving us 20 percent damage mid to aoe's very good even more tanky and we also did get a nice roll dodge passive now as of lost deaths. This is basically our way to get minor force, increases our critical damage done by 10%. And we also do get major expedition for 12 seconds, increases our movement speed by 30%. So this basically lets us get to close the gap and get away faster. Next, we do run radiant regeneration. Rest in peace, how the mighty have fallen. Basically, heal X amount over 10 seconds, mostly just there to sustain one of our skills, the vamp talk, which I'll talk to in a little bit. Next, we do run shadow disguise, this is basically our cloak. Your next direct damage attack we use within three seconds will always be a critical strike. So this guarantees that our dizzy swing will always crit. Basically, just there for the cloak. Next we do is run Sated Fear, this is the other morph of a Vamp Toggle. So what this morph does, it decreases the ramp up cost of Vamp Toggle because I believe the other one was like 360 or 350 ramp up. This one reduces it to 300, so I'm guessing as it levels up because I only have a level 1, it's going to reduce it even more. Increases your weapon and spell damage by 60 every 2 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So basically you can get an extra 300 weapon spell damage. Next we do run Reviving Barrier, basically just there for the Magicka aid from our support passive. Increases your Magicka recovery by 10% for each support ability solid. I kind of just put it there and kind of just never taken it off. You could put um, Temporal Guard and be even more tankier. While Slaughter, you gain minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5%. Either more is fine. I just like to sustain a little bit more. But enough of that, let's go over the stat sheets now. Alright, now let's go over the stat sheets. Sorry for not being in my usual spot in my house. I have to be in Cyrodiil, so that's the reason. Because for Rallying Cry, we need to be have Battle Spirit. And the only way to have Battle Spirit is to be in PvP. So let's go over the stat sheets real quick. So for our Max Mag, we're at 34.6k. Max, max health is 19.2k, doesn't really matter since we're, you know, a ganger. Max damage 16.1k, very juicy. Our mag recoil, let's just pop a pot real quick. So our mag recoil, fully buffed, is just shy of 1500, very good. Health recovery is always a joke to read. Stam recoil, just shy of 700. Our spell damage, let's see, fully buffed up with the rallying cry buff. Come on, rallying cry, crit for me, baby, there you go. Our spell damage is at 62.44 for our rallying, with our rallying cry. Very, very juicy. Our weapon crit can go up to 49.3 when we proc our hemorrhage passive from critting. Our penetration doesn't really matter. All morphs of the 2H ulti bypass uh, resistances, so it doesn't really matter. Next, our spell physical resist, let's just pop our buff real quick. Spell resist just over 20k, and our physical resist was at 18.6k. And our crit resist with rallying cry. Come on, baby. Come on. There you go. Alright, our current resistance is at 29.32. Quick math, that is equivalent to 44.4% critical resistance. So we are taking 44.4% less damage from crit attacks. That is very, very juicy. Very good. Honestly, so good. So for our attributes, obviously, we have full points in the max mag. So for the race, I am a Dark Elf. Dark Elf is almost good on almost any damage build these days. We do get dynamic. Increases your max mag and max dam by 1910. Obviously, more max mag means more damage. And max dam obviously means that we can get an extra roll dodge or an extra CC break. Because any build caught without stam, well, let's just help there's a key for you to res that. Next, we do have resist flame. Increases your flame resist by 4620. Really good because the main crown of this build is more than likely mag DK. 
Magdikis. Magdikis just shred any build these days. So being able to be just have a little bit more tanky to this against them is really, really good. And next we do have Ruination. Increases your weapon and spell damage by 258. Really, really good. We're never going to say no to some extra weapon and spell damage. For the Mundus, we do run the Shadow. Increases our critical damage, critical healing by 17%. Honestly, the best pound for pound Mundus stone in the entire game for damage. We are a stage 3 vampire. Honestly, you could be either one stage 2 or stage 3. Doesn't really matter since we're mostly just trying to benefit from our passive uh, strike from the Shadow for our vampires. So at, at bare minimum, stage 2. When you leave sneak invisibility or miss, in our case invisibility, your weapon and spell damage is increased by 300 for six seconds. So after we finish our dizzy and swing, our onslaught will get an extra 300 weapon and spell damage. Very, very juicy. I am a stage three vampire, also to benefit from my death, reduces your damage taken by up to 30% based on your missing health. So like, even more tankiness on top of the marking with, with Rallying Cry and not being able to get CC'd or snared or rooted. It's just, this thing makes you very tanky for a ganker, honestly. Like, it's crazy. You don't even notice the damage loss. And also, being a stage 3 vampire reduces the cost of our vampire abilities by up to 16%. Because vamp toggle is, since the nerf to mutagen is kind of, you know, has hurt this build a little bit. So that's why we have to change the other to the other morph. Being able to hop that out is always nice to have. Alright, but enough of that. Let's go over the CP now. Alright, so for the blue CP, we do run Fighting Finesse. Increases our critical damage, critical healing by eight, up to 8%. Next, we do have Explorer, increases your damage done against off-balance enemies by up to 10%. Next, we do have Mastered Arms, increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by up to 6%. And we do run Biting Aura, increases your damage done with aerial effect attacks by 6%. Believe it or not, Onslaught and its other morphs are AoE, so this is the only way to buff it, because if you run Deadly Aim, it won't benefit from this. Alright, so for the red CP, we do run Celebrity, increases our movement speed by up to 10%, honestly the best CP in the entire game. Next, we do run Bastion, increases the effectiveness of your damage shield and damage against shielded enemies by up to 15%. Main reason we run this, because believe it or not, this CP is the only red CP in the entire game that actually increases our damage done this thing will actually makes us do 15 percent more damage against shielded targets so that's why it's really good next we do run relentlessness being stunned or fear causes you to gain major protection for three seconds reducing your damage taken by up to 10 percent so we basically just gave you more tanky when we get stunned so really good and for the last one we do run balance vitality increases our max health by up to 1400 obviously the more health we have the more intimidating look and we're not easily going to flop over it for the green cp doesn't really matter the only one i would really matter is that you have sustaining shadows steve's blessing Gifted Rider and Rationer. I don't know why I have meticulous disassembly. Completely forgot. <laughs> Things you don't realize until after PvP. But enough of that. Let's go over the combo rotation now. Alright, so for the combo rotation, it's not too hard. Honestly, obviously you wouldn't be doing this in front of in front of them. So all you really do is you're gonna pop your buffs, right? So your vamp toggle. So we have three buffs. So we have our vamp toggle and our channel acceleration. Those are the only buffs we really care about. So we're just gonna pop all the other ones. So we pop our vamp toggle into our to our muty, into our channel, into our phantasmal escape. Wait till we get about full stacks, and right before we go in, we're gonna pop our our channel into our muty again, cloak right behind them. So right before we get behind them, we cloak we hit cloak again, uppercut into a Disney into an onslaught, and then light attack execute, and then roll dodge away and cloak away. And that's pretty much it. And then you just go off to the side, wait till you see your next target. So the whole point is to dizzy swing into an onslaught and then follow up with a light attack execute. Just in case our onslaught didn't create or wasn't just enough, that guaranteed, oh, guaranteed that killer's blade is going to be enough. Oh, let me tell you. So that's pretty much it. Not really hard, pretty easy. So basically, again, so I'm going to pop my vamp toggle into my abilities. Pop my abilities real quick. Buffs everything. Make sure I hit my cloak. So right before I go in, hit my muty into my channel again. And then cloak in. Get behind my target. See my target into an uppercut. Onslaught. Execute. And then cloak away. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes we don't even need that execute. Sometimes they just flop over from that from that onslaught. Trust me, <laughs> happens more often than not. So that's pretty much it. Pretty easy. Like, it's pretty simple. That's what I like about this build. It's really easy. Like, you just pretty much just go in with ulti and you just dizzy and swing into it. You don't even have to do Vam Toggle if you really wanted to. If it's, Vam Toggle is too much for you, you can also just go in with the, with the dizzy and swing into an onslaught. You're more than likely kill most people like that. Just be careful that Mutagen, when you do pop Mutagen, this is the only skill on our back bar that actually will pull you out of stealth. So if we're cloaked, this actually will pull me out of stealth, you see? It pulled me out. So just be careful with that. Other than that, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, but now let's get into the pros and cons of the build. All right, so just like any other build, this build obviously has pros and cons. Let's start off with the cons. Obviously, it's a gank build. What do you expect? You're not gonna 1vx the world. You're not gonna be able to tank a zerg and survive and bomb a whole group. And you know, the whole point of your build is not for that. Point of your build, is your very single target and you have very, you, I wouldn't even say very little group utility. You have no group utility. The whole point of this is if you're solo, maybe you got a buddy with you 
and you guys just want to have some fun and go in and gang people so much fun to do another con of the build is that the bane of your existence are d-techs and mag dk's and divines forbid if you have a mag dk that pops a detect on you they will sweat you down and more than likely you're not gonna be able to survive the pressure and you will die it's the unfortunate truth we are squishy ish with all the sets we have we're pretty tanky for a game build, but we're not the tankies we're not gonna be able to just stay alive forever and have infinite sustain that's not where we are another con of the build is when you do inevitably die people will be at me it happens a lot people just can't get fed up with you after you kill them so many times with your gimmicks of got you know onslaughting them into oblivion killing them like 20 times eventually they will sweat you down they'll set up little traps they'll just wait they'll set up a bait they'll set up one kid and just have like 10 kids in stealth waiting for you to hit that one kid and they'll all just come out trying to kill you it's so funny and stupid but the main con of the build is RNGs blessing you with the crit on your onslaught. If RNGs blesses you with the crit on your onslaught, you will more than likely hit a 17 to 23k onslaught. And if he doesn't want grant you your wishes, you won't crit and you'll probably hit like an 8 to 10k onslaught. So this guilt build is very dependent on RNGs. Our Dizzy Swig is guaranteed to crit from our cloak, right? The only problem is onslaught is not guaranteed to crit. So if we don't crit, more than likely we're not gonna be able to kill them. So you can try to follow up with an, like a light attack execute, could it work? That's the biggest con is just the RNG on crits. But now let's go into the pros. This build was one of the most fun ganks I've ever done. The only thing that ever came close was like Somerset days with that whole gank build I did when it was like a snipe into a into a silver bolts gank. Like that was pretty fun. But this one's just like so much fun to do, honestly. Like I love this build so much. It was so easy to set up and easy to do. It was just so easy. All you do is dizzy and swing and bonk someone into oblivion right after, and that's it. If they're lucky enough to survive, well guarantee they're not gonna survive that 20k execute. So yeah, pretty easy, not very hard to do. Another pro of the build is that this set you can pretty much make this set pretty easy. Like Sword Singer, really easy to get. Rallying Cry can be purchased. So these sets can all be purchased. Rallying Cry, Sword Singer can all be purchased from Guild Traders. You can farm it easily too. Battle Orgs, you can do it from March of Sacrifice, pretty easy. Mostly everyone has Battle Orgs these days. The only one is Marking, or any Mythics honestly can be a grind, but obviously I'll have you know some alternatives if you don't want to grind Mythics or anything. It's just a kickback build. Honestly, as much as we all hate getting ganked and whatever, it, sometimes PvP is just, it's just bad. Like sometimes you have too many sweaty groups on. Sometimes it's just no one fighting. Sometimes you just want to like chill back. You have like an hour. You don't want to really sweat too much. You just want to have fun and just gang people. There you go. This is a perfect build. Really fun to do. I just love it. Like once I get on it, I just can't get off it. I'm always telling, all right, one, one, one more onslaught game. Oh, okay. One more, one more, one more. You know, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And another pro is you can actually one shot kids with an onslaught. If they have low enough health. It happens more often than not. So if someone has like below 20k health, you can almost legitimately one-shot them in onslaught like look at these clips i'm legit one-shotting these kids with onslaught right now that is that is crazy to think about <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> oh man that's that's actually really that's actually really funny but enough of that let's get over the alternatives now so for the alternatives there's only one small alternative that i would do so if you didn't want to do the whole back bar set so what you could do instead is there's another set called red eagles fury adds 471 weapon and spell damage to your weapon abilities but increases the cost of your weapon abilities by five percent so that is a very very powerful set you can run so the way i would run that is i would run sword singer on the battle axe and then run all sword singer jewelry and then for the body i would wear all medium red eagles fury you could probably get away with 6-1 or 5-2, honestly, just get that little bit of extra crit because each light arm, each piece of light armor just gives one extra percent crit, but honestly, you can just go full medium and just do so much crazy damage. Either one's fine. You are sacrificing a bit of crit, so just be careful with that. You won't crit your onslaught as much, but you, when you do crit, trust me, you will hit very, very hard. And then for the back bar, you can just put a Maelstrom Resto. It doesn't, it wouldn't have to be perfect. You could just put a Maelstrom Resto. So when your mutagen just does crit, you'll be able to get some sustain off that, which is very good. So the build was very fun to do. Honestly, I did enjoy the build. It was very easy to set up, very easy to do. Like once you get the hang of it, all you really, <laughs> the only thing you really do is just buff up and then dizzy and swings and bonk someone into oblivion. It's not very hard. Anyone can do it. It might be a little nerve wracking your first time ganking. Trust me, it was very nerve wracking my first time. Just overreacting like, what if I mess up? No, it's not gonna work. And once you do it a few times, it just becomes like second nature and you just bonk kids, bonk kids, bonk kids and just bonk even more kids. And then, this is when you start getting riskier and riskier and you start killing kids in stacks and like and they can't do anything because of our morph being able to make a cc immune snare immune and it brute immune for eight seconds like huh. this build is just it makes you so tanky for this honestly this build is very tanky like you get a lot of crit resist you get marking which gives you even more armor like this build is just 
just dumb, just dumb tanky. Like, we get really, really, we don't even sacrifice any damage for being tanky. Like, it's just there. Really nice, very good. Honestly, I would highly, highly recommend giving it a chance. All right, I hope you did enjoy the gank video. It wasn't really a meta build, it was more of a gank build, honestly, because, you know, sometimes we just want to chillax and have fun in Cyrodiil. We don't want to just sweat every time we play a game, you know? Sometimes we just want to come home, relax, have good times, and there you go. Like the video if you liked it, comment your thoughts or experience with the build. Also, anything I might have missed out, what build video I should do next. Subscribe for more. Hope you do enjoy the rest of the small montage, but most importantly, stay zergy.